Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present Positive Money's uh, position on the digital euro. For those of you who do not know us, we're an international research and campaigning organization that works towards a money system that enables a fair, democratic, and sustainable economy. Today, I have three key messages that I would like to deliver. First, we welcome the Commission's proposal to protect access to cash for as long as is possible. Cash is the most inclusive, anonymous, and cost-free means of payment. Two, a digital euro is an opportunity to provide a universally accessible and safe electronic form of public money. Unfortunately, the current proposal on the digital euro undermines this ambition by heeding too much to the concerns of the banking industry. But there is still time for the EU legislators to fix it. Three, a more ambitious digital euro should have similar benefits to cash today, and it should be available through public intermediaries as well. The cash issued by central banks is crucial in establishing trust. People trust that the moment that they want to withdraw money from their bank account, that they can convert their bank deposits, which is private money, into cash, on par into cash, which is public money. Cash is the most liquid, anonymous, and risk-free asset that people have access to in the economy today. It's risk-free because it's a promise from the central bank to pay the owner of the money what the banknote states is its worth. And as opposed to private banks, a central bank cannot go bankrupt. Today, cash accounts for less than 15% of money in circulation, and this decline in cash has serious implications for our society. Without it, people would even more be reliable on private bank deposits, which, as Miguel has pointed out, are inherently risky, as we have seen through numerous banking crises. Without cash, people will lose anonymity. It will mean even more transfer of personal data into the private banking sector. For these reasons, we welcome the Commission's proposal for legal tender of cash. However, faced with an increasing demand for digital payments and for the reasons that I just mentioned, we need a cash fit equivalent fit for the digital age. The digital euro is an opportunity to provide a universally accessible and safe electronic form of public money. And this is what the ECB initially set out to do, when in 2020 it announced that it would start investigating the issuance of the digital equivalent of euro banknotes. But the ECB has since backtracked on its ambition. It has now reduced its ambition to providing a simple digital means of payment and not digital public money. The distinction is key. If the digital euro is simply a digital means of payment, then people cannot store or save it. They can only use it to carry out payment transactions. So why has the ECB and the European Commission adopted this approach? The issue is if that people could store digital euros, then banks would have to compete with the ECB to attract deposits by, for instance, increasing the rate on deposits. Now, that only sounds fair considering that the banks are currently earning billions but are refusing to increase rates on their clients' deposit by very much. But banks have taken the argument further. They cry wolf that there will be massive financial instability due to the sudden and large outflow of bank deposits towards central bank digital currencies. I'm going to come back to this point on financial instability, but I first want to demonstrate the impact that the arguments of the banking sector have had on the current proposal of the digital euro and why it undermines the entire digital euro project, even its use as a simple digital means of payment. To prevent the digital euro from competing with bank deposits, the ECB and the European Commission have had to make the digital euro unattractive enough for people. The digital euro is therefore not to be remunerated, it will bear no interest, and there will be a holding limit. The ECB's uh, current holding limit, proposal for a holding limit, is 3,000 euros, and it's worth mentioning that the banks initially pushed for 60 euros, although this seems to have been increased to 500 euros now. Moreover, the Commission has made it clear that people with a pre-existing bank account will only be able to access digital euros through their banks. Now, if I'm a consumer and I open my online banking app, and I see two very seemingly similar accounts, one where I can hold unlimited, remunerated bank deposit euros, and the other where I can only hold 3,000 unremunerated digital euros, I will surely not bother with the latter. I would not even be able to use the digital euros to pay for the security deposit on my new apartment. The current proposal is a missed opportunity, but the EU legislators can still fix it. We can still ensure that the digital euro has similar benefits to public money today, cash, and that it is usable for people. To do this, the EU legislators need to ensure three things. First, that the digital euro has a high level of privacy. 
As evidenced by the ECB's public consultation on the digital euro, privacy is a major concern for people. For this reason, the offline version of the digital euro is crucial as it is most able to mimic the anonymous nature of cash today. The design and choice of technology for the offline version need to be carefully chosen to ensure this. Two, people must be able to access the digital euro through an account with a public or non-profit intermediary, precisely because it is a public good. We welcome the Commission proposal that allows this for people who do not have existing bank accounts or for accessibility reasons, but we think this option should be open to everyone. Three, just as with cash, there should be no or temporary high holding limits. We think that holding limits are only appropriate if deemed necessary to prevent acute financial instability risks, namely the banks being unable to deliver on their obligation towards their depositors. However, numerous studies have shown, including from the Bank of Canada, that even in extreme circumstances, banks would be able to cover the large outflows of bank deposits towards central bank digital currencies. Other studies, including from the Bank of International Settlements, show that the risk of a bank run is unlikely and that, the, and that central bank digital currencies could increase re the resilience of the financial system. Finally, it's worth noting that the Bank of England is considering holding limits in the range of 10 to 20,000 pounds. In conclusion, a digital euro should provide people with a safe electronic form of public money and should not be reduced to a simple digital means of payment. The current proposal can still be remedied to ensure that the digital euro is usable for people, has similar benefits to public money today, cash, and that it can be accessed through public intermediaries. Thank you very much.